extra to move order. Now, why, if they do it the way we just mentioned, black can find themselves in a big trouble? I just outlined the black's plan. d4, d5, c4, dc, knight f3, knight f6, e3, bishop g4, we take, e6, we castle, bishop d6, h3, bishop h5, or bishop e2. Now, black castles, white goes knight d2, knight c6 is a good plan with e5, but remember, we, if we play here bishop b5, black will never make e5. So, because on e5, bishop takes c6 simply wins the game, so black must play the a6 move first as a preparation. We go b3, knight d7, and bishop, or knight c6, and bishop b2. Now black wants to go e5, but they can't because we just mentioned knight takes e5, bishop takes e2, knight takes c6. So black goes queen e8. And here, that's where white gets solid, small advantage. Well, maybe actually not so small, but solid advantage by playing rook to c1. Now this is very interesting move. What does rook c1 has to do uh, with uh, e5? After e5, you, you will see the idea why rook c1 has to be played. Now we play pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes to e5, everything is forced, bishop takes e2, now, queen takes e2, bishop takes e5, and here we see why rook c1 was necessary, because white plays bishop to a3, attacking black's rook, and white's rook is not on a1, where it can be taken by black bishop. So after bishop a3, black is forced to play bishop to d6, then white plays bishop takes d6, C takes D, and Rook F to D1. Very solid advantage for uh, White, and very pleasant position to play. So, weak pawn on D6, better placed Rooks, and outpost on D4. This is some advantage. That's what we wanted, that that's what we got. So, this is on one of the variations of Queen's Gambit accepted. So let's, before we go to the other variation, which is move e6 instead of bishop g4, let's make quick points, quick uh, summary of, uh, of bishop g4 variation. Quick summary of bishop g4 variation is this. So white takes on c4, goes bishop e2, and black has to prepare for e5, and in order to do that, they have to play a6 first. Uh, and then we simply develop pieces and we end up with a, a better pawn structure and uh, some pressure in the center. Now, the other move in this position is e6. Now we play bishop takes c4. Bishop takes c4 is a, it's a normal answer. And Black goes a6. Now what black wants is they want to go b5, bishop b7, and c5. Then they will have an equal position. At least they're playing for equality this way. We castle. Black goes b5. We go bishop d3. Black goes bishop b7. And we go queen e2. Now this position is... Um, very interesting. So what Black's idea is to go c5. Now what happens if they go c5 right away? And what happens if they go c5 later? Now, normal move for white after b5 is bishop b3. 
but that's the complicated move. You have to study a lot of theory. If you want to uh, learn it quick, Bishop D3 is an interesting move. I recommend it's much less material to study and easier game to play. Bishop B7, Queen E2. Now Black's C5 move is not nearly as good because of Bishop on D3. Now let's see why. We take on C5 and help him develop, but here we have tactical shot. Bishop takes B5 that wins at least a pawn. If, if white takes the bishop, then black loses two pawns because white takes one of the bishops. Next move. Uh, so bishop takes c5 is not good, but so far black lost a pawn. What can white do? Uh, well, what can black do? They can go knight d7. Now this, at first, it looks like okay for black, but it isn't. Let's see why. Um, c5 pawn is hanging, and uh, what can white do here? This is one move, knight d7, and the other move is bishop takes f3. On knight d7, we can go b4, and there is some theory on that. And actually, the, I played a game against Viktor Korchnoi not that long ago, and uh, I got um, a solid advantage with, uh, with white in this position. So the other continuations that the continuation that um, black has is bishop takes f3. Now we play queen takes f3. This is just a little advantage for white, but clear play. Now black goes knight d7. Pawn is hanging, and we cannot protect this pawn. We have to give up, give this pawn back, but we're going to have better position. We cannot go c6 because of knight to e5. We're losing a piece on d3. For the same reason, we cannot go b4, knight e5. But what we can do is we can play queen to e2. And after knight takes to c5, bishop to c2. Now what happens, black... By the time black finishes development, we go rook d1, knight c3, and then we go e4. We have two very strong bishops. Actually, one way you can go e4 and e5, or you can go b3 and bishop b2. In both cases, you have two strong bishops and some advantage. So that's an easy way out of this opening. Now, what's what can we do if black does not play c5 and c5 is not a good move in this position? Uh, here is the position we have, and so black does not play c5. Suppose they play uh, something like knight d7. Then we go a4. And after a4, if black goes D, B4, if black takes on A4, we just have better pawn structure after knight C3 followed by knight takes A4. But if black goes B4, then we go knight to D2. Here is how you develop. You put knight on D2, pawn on B3, bishop on B2, and knight on C4. You have very safe opening with a clearly better position and clear plan. What is your plan? What can be your plan? There are two semi-open files, C1 and D1, C, uh, C and D file. You put rooks on C1 and D1, and you have clear advantage. I don't know how big of advantage it is, but it's a very clear that white is much better. So that's the easy way to play Queen's Gambit accepted. Remember, I'm giving you just main points. And now, one more position of Queen's Gambit accepted, and we have to go on now to the other openings. d4, d5, c4, dc, knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, bishop takes c4. Frequently, it's played with this move order, c5, castle, a6, queen e2, and now b5. Bishop d3, 
And now we know if they go bishop b7, we have what we wanted, we already discussed, but black may go knight to c6. What do we do then? Then we go a4. After b4, black, black's best move is b4 here. They can go c4, then we go bishop c2, and we are ready to move pawns in the center. The best move is b4, then we again, we can go b3, or we can go knight d2 and knight c4 and get very good position, followed by b3 and bishop b2. And the last continuation I want to look for black is when they take c takes d. Again, I'm going to give you now position explaining which is clearly bad position for black. Now you take with a pawn, and this is uh, one of the most popular positions in chess in general. You can get this type of position, the type of position, not exact same position, where the isolated pawn, you can get it from Sicilian, from Karokan, from Grunfeld, from Queen's Gambit, King's, well, no, not the King's Gambit, from, oh, from majority of the chess openings. But this particular position is not good for uh, black. After c, d, e, d, knight c6, for example, bishop e3, and bishop e7. Let's see what's the black, black's problem here. White goes a4. And after b4, we have to go knight d2, castle, and knight to b3 or c4. Knight b3 is also very, very good. And after bishop b7, a5. Let's look at this position. Black has in their possession the d5 square, which they can occupy any time, while we are not contesting d5 square. What we have, we have c file for the rook. We have potential c5, uh, c file for the rook, c5 square for our knight. And black has big problem with a6 pawn which is always under observation and needs two pieces that are tied up defending it. Position is real, real bad. And uh, I, I have played this position several times. It's a real difficult position for black to play. But that uh, practically wraps up the um, queen's gambit accept it entirely so let's go to let's go to the um, d4 so we we finished queen all the varieties of d5 move except miscellaneous opening after d4 d5 c4 miscellaneous opening mean knight c6 move Bishop f5 move, and e5 move. Now, those are very small openings and very easy to get some advantage of them. Now, if you, we have to spend just a few minutes on them that I give you a very brief, quick line, and we move on. But if you want to get bigger advantage, then I would recommend you, then you have to learn more theory and then you have to get help from the um, opening publications so let's look at let's look at uh, uh, e5 move this is the more popular than the other two i showed you this is albion counter gambit d takes c d4 knight f3 this is all modern theory, knight c6, pawn g3, bishop g4, and in this position, book says, play knight d2. Knight d2 is the best move, they say. Okay, here is what I would tell you. B book says what is the most popular, and the most popular move comes from the statistics of play, games played and the, res and the result 
uh, which uh, had a certain continuation produced. But we have different agenda here. We have different uh, incentive here. We want to get good position with a quick learning and quick window out of the opening with comfortable position. I recommend bishop g2. It's never a danger that black will take pawn on f3, knight on f3, and pawn on e5 because their pawn on b7 is hanging. My idea actually is not to play knight d2 ever. And uh, for example, queen d7, the main move, castle, and black castles. Now what happens is black may be intending bishop takes f3 and knight takes e5 since b7 pawn is protected. So that's why actually uh, white uh, theory recommends to connect those knights that uh, e5 pawn will be always secured. But I don't think if e5 pawn is as relevant. So I would go queen a4 here. And if black wants to take this uh, uh, knight on f3, they cannot do it yet because bishop takes f3 and on knight takes e5, a7 pawn hangs. So let's see what is the idea why I'm withholding knight d2 move. There is an idea behind it. This was, this opening was played, this position was already in my game. My opponent played bishop h3. What I recommend, this is sharp way to play for white, and I think well justified. Now, what black wants to do here? Black wants to exchange light square bishop, oh, light square bishop, since bishop on g2 protecting white's king, and then what black wants to play h5 open and mate us. So we want to do the same thing on the queen side. So who is first? And I think this position, honestly, I think this position is a real, real bad for black. So what we should do here, we should simply, we have an extra pawn, we don't mind giving it back, but we want to gain some time for an attack. There is our extra pawn, e5 pawn. So we're playing e6 and black must capture on e6 with the bishop, which delays their plan of exchanging light square bishop. Why with the bishop? Because after e6, if queen takes e6, then after knight g5, black can simply resign. And pawn takes e6 is also not possible because black, white simply plays bishop takes h3. So bishop takes e6 move is absolutely unconditionally forced. Then we go rook d1. See, now if black comes back to h3, we can retreat the bishop and keep light square bishop, which is so strong on the diagonal h1 to a8. So supporting white's attack. So what happened in my game, let's go quickly through this game, knight f6, bishop g5, bishop e7, and the reason why I was not developing my b1 knight, first we already played bishop g5, and now we go knight to c3. Knight becomes a lot more active on c3 than it could have been on d d2. White played, a, black played h6, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and uh, knight to d5. Um, in this position, actually, black played bishop takes d5, and uh, black made a mistake and lost quickly. But position, I think, is already very bad. Bishop takes d5, c takes d5, queen takes d5, 
knight takes d4. You see now bishop opened. Light square bishop. And on queen a5, knight takes c6. And after queen a4, bishop h3, black is checkmated. Next move. So this is um, this is one of the reasons. This is little tactics involved, but it's far from being forced, of course. But no matter what black did, white has very, very uh, um, a strong position. Well, this is my recommendation on Albion's counter gambit, and you can try it. So the difference between this brief version of Queen's Gambit declined, Queen's uh, Counter Gambit, sorry. So, and book version that this is shorter and newer. So your opponent likely to be less prepared and maybe totally unprepared and you can learn it faster. So that's our goal. Now, so the other, so we covered already Albion counter gambit, bishop f5 opening. And again, they in different parts of the world, they call it different name. So you can call, I would call bishop f5 variation. I cannot be wrong by calling it. So bishop f5, so we can play very simple. Play knight c3, and when your opponent plays e6, you don't have to go queen b3 and try to win pawn on b7 and quickly kill him because that's what black wants you to do. Uh, we can go knight c3 on e6. That, that's what black wants you to do. You, they want you to go queen b3 and then they go knight c6, queen takes b7, knight b4. It's very complicated and you are very, very unlikely to get this position. I never had it in my life in a tournament game. And I played quite a few tournaments. So uh, I've had it sometimes in a blitz games, but never in a tournament game. Well, here is the shortest way to learn this opening. Bishop f5, you can go knight c3, right. But the easiest way to play... Either you go knight c3 and learn the theory, or play c takes d. That's the easiest way to play this opening. After cd, you have clear advantage, small size, and very easy to learn. Learn it in five minutes. The best move for black is bishop takes b1. And it's the only move, because black doesn't want to take on d5, give you another tempo for developing knight with the tempo, and then go e4 with the tempo. So they want to, what they want to do is they want to simply take this knight. And now if rook takes b1, then after queen takes d5, black is okay. But we don't do that. What we play here is queen a4 check. And the best move is c6. Now we play pawn takes c6. There are no sub-variations. It's a very simple one clear line. d takes c6. Black must, absolutely must, play knight takes c6. Now we play simply rook takes b1. And black has two continuations. It's very easy to cover both of them real quick. One of them is queen takes d4, and the other one is e5. After e5, we obviously we cannot take on d takes c, because after bishop b4, we lose. But let's cover quickly both of them. After e5, what we do, we may go a3, or, or simply we go um, knight f3. This is easy continuation. And if your opponent takes, then you can go g3, Knight f6, bishop g2, black can give check if they want to, bishop d2, take, take. White has an advantage. Clear, simple, and without any sub-variations. This is one move, that's what you do if black goes e5 in that position. And second move black has in this position is simply queen takes d4. 
And after queen takes d4, you also have an advantage. You simply play queen takes d4, knight takes d4, and e3. Now, why is this an advantage? Knight is hanging. Knight c2 check is a bad move because of king d1, and knight has to go to b4, and eventually come back to c6 anyway. So, probably the most reasonable move is knight c6, and then you go bishop d2, just continue development. You have two bishops in the in a very in a very almost symmetrical posi uh, positions. You have some advantage, or you can even go bishop b5, knight f3, and white is clearly better. Again, small advantage, but quickly to learn and extremely low probability for for you getting it in a tournament game. And quickly to go on. So this would cover in in all entirety. So this um, bishop f5 variation on second move, and one that would left will have left is knight c6. Now what I would recommend you not the main variation in this opening, but it's a main in the way that you get. You, or the simple variation in a way that you get quick, quickly, you get very comfortable position with a clear plan. And again, it's very low probability for you getting it. Knight f3, bishop g4, and simply pawn takes d5. This is the modern, th this is the latest theory for black, b bishop takes f3. And now the main continuation is g takes f and queen takes d5. And the other continuation is d takes c, bishop takes c6. We don't want to play this. The simple way I would recommend you to play here for uh, white is take the bishop with an e pawn, queen takes d5, now to go bishop e3. You're protecting the d pawn and you're intending to play knight c3 next move. e5, knight c3. Bishop b4, I've had it again. I did not have it in the tournament game, but I had it in some semi blitz and blitz games. And after bishop takes bishop b4, simply d takes e. This is a I would I could I assess this position as clear advantage for um, for uh, white. Now they can play queen takes e5, then you play queen b3. This is very good position for you. Or you can even play queen c1 on queen b3. I wonder if black can play knight d4. You can also play simply queen c1. This is also a uh, clear advantage for white. Then you play bishop e2 and castle short. White has good position. Or black may, may play queen takes d1, rook takes d1, knight takes e5. Again, you play bishop e2, you have two bishops, active position, some advantage. That's the end of learning of this variation. You can concentrate on different aspects of the game. So that will, in all entirety, cover d4, d5 um, uh, opening. d4, d5. So we covered queen's gambit, accepted, declined. Accepted, declined, Slav defense, counter gambit, and a couple of small, um, uh, very unpopular openings. So on d4, now let's look at few other, uh, several other um, openings that are maybe some of the most, some of the major openings in the chess theory. Okay, let's go with the king's Indian defense. This is one of the most complicated and mo most difficult opening to learn for either side in chess. But we are white and we have to find some shortcut to learning this opening. How to play king's Indian the easy way. Now, I've played with king's Indian 
uh, for white thousands of games and so is for black I, the King's Indian was my, one of my main weapons for white, uh, for black, and I, I played D4 and always did, and so I had a lot of King's Indian on my own from the, on the other side. So, there is only one continuation which I still play, even though I know the modern theory of this opening, that I specifically like, and it suits perfectly to any of you who, trying, who, uh, who tries to learn King's Indian the easy way. Here, the, the variation I am suggesting. D4, Knight, F6, C4, G6, Knight, C3, Bishop, G7, Knight, F3, Castle, and now we go Bishop, F4. Remember, when you play bishop f4, we're trying to play e3 variation. There is always possibility that black can make a u-turn and play Grunfeld defense. The possibility of this is very, very low. And let me explain you why. Let's go back to move one. Imagine so, someone playing you diff, uh, 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 King's Indian for black. D4, knight, f6, c4, g6, and you go knight, c3. You give here black first chance to play Grunfeld defense, d5. Black does not do it. Black plays bishop, g7, which means they are prepared for e4 move, and they will never get Grunfeld. That means they have no intention to play Grunfeld. They want bishop g7, knight f3. You giving them second chance to play d5 and turn into a Grunfeld. Again, white castles. And they don't want to play Grunfeld. Now you play bishop f4 and you give them third chance to play d5 and get Grunfeld defense. And here they play d5. I find it chances for that but equal with the winning lottery. So, but if this happens anyway, let, let me introduce you one quick, quick way to go through this opening. The e3, now quick way to learn how to play with this particular version of Grunfeld defense. E3, C5. Now, we are learning King's Indian, but this is variety of Grunfeld. That's not the system we're going to play in a regular Grunfeld, but if this happens, how to get out of it quick. E3, C5, D takes C, and Queen, ta queen A5. There is no other reasonable way to play this position for, um, for black. And here, the move I would recommend is rook c1. And black, white simply has very good position. May not be with any advantage, but it's a very simple position to play. There is knight e4 move, and there is d takes c move. If they play d takes c, you simply take bishop takes c4. And what you do is just, in order to complete this opening, you have to just uh, remember basic principles of chess, just develop pieces. But if they play knight e4, just go bishop e5, and you are guaranteed a good position here. Bishop e5, um, now if bishop takes, knight takes, and white has very good position, you will have chance to uh, double check it, and if black plays a F6 is not a good move because queen takes d5 check. Um, and uh, therefore, this is the end of the complexity of this variation. So, but as, as I mentioned already, chances for this happening are very, very slim. So, let's go with, with the king's Indian, the way we wanted to learn.
knight f3, d6, bishop f4. Suppose they go with d6 move. Of course, it can be black can play castling first or d6 first. You can't control it. So if they go d6 first, we can still go bishop f4, castle, and then e3. Well, in this position, black has two or three ways to play. Uh, they can go for e5 as a plan. Of course, they cannot play e5 right away. They can go after dark square bishop. It's known the uh, fact that if black playing king's Indian gets white's dark square bishop, it's always good. It's always good, but as we know, this is the rule, and we know that every rule has some exceptions. This is a clear, clear case of exception when it's not good for black to get white's dark square bishop. On knight h5, for example, we go bishop g5. Now black continues to uh, to get to trying to get this dark square bishop, bishop h4, and now g5. Now all black has to do on bishop g3 to take on g3, hg, and they have reasonably good position. However, after g5, white plays knight to d2. This is very clever move. This is a pattern in which white preserves their dark square bishop because now taking bishop on h4 is a real bad idea because queen takes h5 and needless to say black's uh, king side is totally destroyed and black has bad position so which means that it's not a very good idea to start chasing after f4 bishop knight d7 bishop e2 same thing will happen now bishop g5 h6 bishop h4 g5 knight d2 and bl bl white is much better now on knight f4 move it's possible move we have two different continuations we get big advantage with a e takes f g takes h 